Hey guys, Victoria here from Pincel coming to you on the third day of Copenhagen Fashion Week. And actually it's sort of a review of both day and two and three in a way because the shows that I'm reviewing, uh, some of them took place on day two, just very, very late into the evening, hence why we're making them a part of the day three review. So the first show that we went to on Thursday night was actually the Malina Berga show, which I was really excited for because she was one designer that I was really waiting to watch here at Copenhagen Fashion Week. Um, I personally love Malina Berga. I love the fact that her clothes definitely carry a sense of femininity to them, that they consider the wearer of them as well, and that she makes a lot of sustainable pieces. And what I mean by that is that there's pieces that will last in your wardrobe for years and years to come. She definitely stayed true to that in this collection as well. And it was probably the most spring-summer friendly collection that I saw throughout Copenhagen Fashion Week thus far because there was a lot of pinks and bright colors and floral prints. Um, the material is very beautiful. And one thing that I love, again, I mentioned before, is that you can always imagine yourself wearing this collection regardless of your shape and body size. Um, it's something that you say, I really love that piece, wish it was in my closet. My favorite piece throughout the show was a maxi dress in white and black that had actually cap shoulders with this very beautiful detailing of crystal yellow and white beads. So again, definitely a very lovely collection by Malina Berga and, and it was completely, totally traditional to Malina Berga style, but very beautiful, very lovely, very feminine and very elegant. The next collection that we went and saw was Day by Berga and Mikkelsen. And this collection in particular was a bit more edgy, lots of gold and lots of sort of beach wear is what you saw. And they actually had this whole metallic theme which they carried throughout the show in the accessories and the shoes. So a lot of models had this sort of either bronze or silver visor in metallic colors or they had cork wedges with metallic in them as well. Um, personally for me the collection was nice but it went against the grain from what I've saw, seen so far at Copenhagen Fashion Week in the sense that it wasn't particularly wearable. A lot of the designers keep sort of wearability of the clothing in mind and this collection went against that a bit. And usually Day Berga and Mikkelsen um, is very wearable so I was a bit surprised by how much more in the direction of edgy they'd actually gone and how much more of an edgy beachwear collection that they had. And again, even though they had the beachwear element, the color palette for it was relatively cold with a lot of emphasis on metallics. The last collection, which you can call our Twilight show that we saw on day two, was actually the Woodwood show. Very, very cool in terms of sticking to the Copenhagen aesthetic, and Woodwood is generally stuck to its own aesthetic in the sense that they've kept a very dark color palette. It was a collection that tailored to both men's and women's wear. But again, it wasn't a very spring-summer friendly collection. They definitely see here at Copenhagen Fashion Week that they have a trend towards darker palettes and color tones, which definitely keeps in mind their audience and the people that they're catering to in terms of the clothing. However, from a larger perspective, it's just a little bit of a surprise that more designers didn't sort of break out of the box and go for a sort of warmer color palette. So in this collection you saw a lot of navy blues, a lot of dark browns and maroons and burgundies. Um, the men had shorts but a lot of them were paired with sort of blazers and heavy socks and running shoes. The women's wear stuff again had a lot of longer cuts. A lot of the skirts came below the knee. Um, there were a lot of pants and jackets and long sleeve shirts to it and again a darker color palette. The one exception, there were a couple of exceptions. They had a lot of floral prints to a few of their dresses. From then on, we went to different after parties, which was a lot of fun, but again, very, very late night on Thursday night. Today we went to, we started out the morning with Jesper Hovring, which was the prime evening wear collection I've actually seen so far this fashion week. Really lovely dresses in terms of the femininity and the flow of it um, and he you could see a transition in terms of how he colored his collection and it was a very thought out process in the way he moved his collection from being primarily cream into having darker colors towards the end of the collection so you saw a lot of sort of cream elegant flowing organza pieces at the beginning of the collection as the show started out and then eventually it moved into a more metallic um, with um, silver sequins and beading dresses, which were absolutely stunning as well, and eventually moved into black lace um, and a darker pant suit with a dark red pant and a white blouse. And um, my favorite piece to her collection was actually very reminiscent of what Marc Jacobs and Prada both did in fall winter 2012, which was this sort of nude, um, um, this late black lace dress with a nude undertone. 
very structured to the very form fitting to the body it was sort of a one shoulder number absolutely beautiful and definitely again my favorite piece of the whole collection uh, the last show that we saw today was Noah Noah Miniature, which was actually a kid's collection and quite possibly the cutest thing that anyone could have seen all day. All of the little models were absolutely adorable and did a fantastic job, came out beautiful and smiling with little flowers in their hair. And again, other than the Malina Berga show, this is probably the ultimate spring-summer collection. For a kid's collection, it wasn't particularly the brightest colors. They have a lot of pastels, denims. Um, lots of cream colors, which I don't know is the safest color for children, um, but really, really beautiful in terms of the cut and the design and the concept and really kept an airy light feel to it for a children's collection. So definitely adorable way to end out day three of Copenhagen Fashion Week. And yeah, so tomorrow is sort of the last full day of Copenhagen Fashion Week in terms of events and trade shows, etc. Sunday is a bit quieter and sort of more of a send off than anything else. So we'll be back to you tomorrow with more from the last full day of Copenhagen Fashion Week. And if you're wanting to know what I mean when I talk about Danish aesthetic and Danish design, then definitely make sure to check out copenhagen.pinstyle.com to see what people on, are wearing on the streets of Copenhagen. All right, have fun guys and stay tuned. Bye.